latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Kimberly Young. And I'm Lucas Stitt. Hi, Today, this Friday, we're going to talk about Avril Lavigne's new music, NBC's latest show with brothers Seth and Josh Myers, Orphan Black's Tatiana, Tatiana Maslany's new gig, and Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone revival. Plus, Baked by Melissa founder Melissa Benishai joins the table. Yum. Yum. Uh, but first, as you see, we've got some drinks because it's Friday. Cheers to what the we like to do. weekend. Our, Woo! Cheers. Our friends at Tito sent us some lovely vodka, so we decided to make some drinks. Mm. Uh, Thank cheers. you, Tito. Thank, Thank you, Tito. I mean, what is a better brunch drink than a... Um, what, whatever this is, a Bloody Mary. A, a Bloody Mary. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of what it's called. It's so yeah. good right now. Bloody Mary, perfect when you had that hangover the night before oh. and you need a Bloody yeah. Mary to, you know, get, yeah. get, get it going. It. Hair of the dog. Hair that's of the dog. That's what I'm Hair saying. You know, dog. Bloody yes. Mary named after the English queen who killed 300 people in England. Yeah. Yum, that always makes sense. History left another way. Yeah. Bring it Bloody down. Bloody Mary. Thank Woo! you, Tito. We love you. <laughs> no, I keep love sending Tito's. us alcohol. We'll keep yeah. drinking it. Like, keeping my college <laughs> days alive. Mm. All right, well, let's get started. Ashton Kutcher took a photo with a fan after accidentally mowing him down with his Tesla. <laughs> Good guy. Kutcher was reportedly <laughs> pulling out of a studio lot when his car hit a teenage fan riding a scooter nearby. Kutcher allegedly got out of his car to check on the team, so that's good, who only suffered a few cuts and bruises. During the exchange, though, the victim asked for a few quick pictures with Ashton that he posted on Instagram. Uh, this kid's not very smart, because I would have been like, my neck, my back, yeah. my neck and my back. Oh, I thought you were going to say my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. I was like, yeah, if Ashton Kutcher hit me with a car, I would be like, lick my pussy and my crack. Oh, I <laughs> Happy I really morning. thought that was where you were going. I was more Thank talking you, about. I was more talking about getting a cash payout for no. injury. I agree. I mean, okay. but same diff, same hey, diff. Hey man, if well, they make you come, that's a cash payout. <laughs> <laughs> why else would you live in LA if not to get hit by a cele by a celebrity in a car? Yeah, I mean, exactly. that is why you live there. So just in case you do get hit by one, you can sue them or yeah. take a picture with them. I guess this this is not. Um, I, you know, I respect he, he thought suing Ash would be, quote, trashy. That's but so um, this isn't a great day for millennials when you put, you know, I got hit by a card to ask for a couple of pictures and post for the yeah. Instagram. No, it's <laughs> all the tropes. It's like Ashton Kutcher, it's Tesla, it's selfie. Yeah. It's like too many in one one story. Too <laughs> many in one yeah. story. Yeah. Too millennials. Oh my God. Story, I get yeah. it. And this kid is a Manny, and he yeah. was on his way to pick up kids <laughs> on his scooter. And yeah. I'm like, what were you going to do? Like, put them on your back and scoot with them home? Like, what's happening? I I was more interested when he revealed that, like, wow, what is his story that he's on a scooter picking up these kids from school? Where do they go from there? What a life. And also, because yeah. he said he wasn't totally paying attention, it was kind of his fault, so maybe he's coming for Ashton, I don't know. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of questions that this story yeah. arises Someone, that I really yeah. want to find out. Someone needs to do, like, that deep dive, the man behind the scooter. Yes. Andrew yeah. James, that. what yeah. really happened? Yeah. We need to know. Call yeah. back to our guest earlier this week. Check out his podcast. It's great. What's good about this story, though, is that Ashton Kutcher stopped yes. and made sure the kid was okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. he got imagine. out of the car. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, wow, what a hero. <laughs> Usually people, when they hit someone, they just drive off. <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching the local news, but right. hit and runs, they're fucking in. And, and, and also, the kid was like, yeah, you know, he was really great. Like, he got out of the car and asked how I was feeling. Like, yeah, yeah oh my God. he should what do. do. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, exactly, the alternative to just drive off? Like, I'm just saying, most people drive off. So Ashton Kutcher, good job. Good job. I'm really yeah. proud right of on. you. Hit and running this child. <laughs> Um, but I, we were talking earlier, I was like, I, there's a couple celebrities that I would let hit me with a car, and I would be okay with it, and just oh, ask yeah. to take a photo. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Oprah, if she hit me with a car, I would I, be like, can you please pull forward and hit me again, just I, so I can like, I have I think if story. she hit you with a car, somehow you'd be like enlightened. Exactly. Or like mentally you'd be okay. I just feel like that would somehow <laughs> fix a lot of problems if Oprah hit you with the car. I, no, you would apologize. Yes. You'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry you hit me. I oh, ran no. into your car. Yes. Yeah. It was my fault. Which could also happen. I could just run into Oprah's car on purpose. Yeah. yeah. What celebrities would you let hit you with a car? Ooh, I definitely let Emma Roberts run me over. Really? Emma like, Roberts. Uh, yeah. Mm. Emma Roberts is so, like, beautiful and bitchy. Like, I want her to bully me, and then I want her to get in her car and just run me over. <laughs> and you guys can film that and put it on my Insta for me. Yeah. And be like, R.I.P., she died in the hottest way possible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would be very like Scream Queens esque. Yeah. yeah, oh my God, I would love that. And she'd be like, you can suck it. And I'd be like, oh my God, give it to me, Emma. 
<laughs> and how would you would you let hit you in a car? Um, Aaron Judge for sure. New York Yankees. Oh. I'm a huge Yankees fan. Oh, I hope everyone else is. Um, but yeah, he would hit me with a car, and then he would apologize with a marriage proposal. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. wow. Okay, that's how we're gonna broker that. You sure you don't want to get proposed to at the Emmys? I hear that's really cool oh, now. That's a cool thing to do. <laughs> Someone tweeted, I think it was Billy Eichner. He was like, I'm yeah. going to get divorced at the Tony. Yeah. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so good. The perfect um, tweet. I would love for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to hit me with the car. <laughs> oh I really okay. love that, that one picture. Won. That would right. be like, finally, let's take the picture, Ruth, and go work out. Like, <laughs> that's who I would love. Something tells me that one's possible. She just like falls asleep at yeah. the wheel. And you're like, yeah. ah! I'm like, oh. and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to sue her, though, because oh, she, no. she would definitely oh, beat my ass yeah, in court. Yeah, she'd find a way out of that. <laughs> find a way out of that. Don't underestimate Ruth. Oof, scary. <laughs> in other news, Canadian pop star Avril Lavigne is making her big comeback. The Skater Boy singer just released her latest single, Head Above Water, and it's her first new music in five years. It's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> The emotional track chronicles her battle with Lyme disease back in 2015. Levine and her foundation have also launched a charitable t-shirt campaign to coincide with a new single and help raise awareness about the disease. Mm. I had no idea that she was struggling with Lyme disease. Yeah, and it's a pretty, if you guys don't know about Lyme disease, it comes from ticks and it, there's a lot of different symptoms. Some can be mild, some can be severe, but in general, it's fatigue, you can get paralysis of your face. Um, so yeah. it can be a really sort of, it can really impact your life in a yeah. lot of ways. I mean, I've said this before, I'm not ashamed to admit this the reason how I know it's so bad, because if you watch Real House of yeah. Beverly Hills, Yolanda, Yolanda Foster, yeah. who is Yolanda Hadid now, yeah. mother's Gigi and Bella, suffered from Lyme disease and it was such a big storyline for like a few seasons where the women didn't quite understand yeah. how she could be fine one day, not fine the other day. She really had to explain like this is how Lyme disease works. It's really a Really just uh, debilitating. debilitating. Yeah. And yeah. it's a chronic Thank disease, you. right? So then, of course, you throw in the depression that comes with that. So I think it really can affect your life. Right. And I think if you're somebody like Avril, who was on the road and doing all these things that are exhausting, and then you get Lyme disease and you're more exhausted, I can understand why she hasn't released music for a long time, right. you know? Probably just trying to get herself right. Yeah. And the song is definitely not like, hey, 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 I just want to be your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. song. No, this is a very like deep, emotional, like, she wrote this in bed, she was really struggling, and, it, and it's, it's a good song. You can feel like it's it's coming from a, a, mm -hmm. a different place. Yeah. She says uh, that she actually thought she was dying one night. She was in so much pain and she mm -hmm. was in bed and her mom was holding her. And that's what this whole head above water thing is. is she prayed to God, like, please just help me keep my head above water. Help me get through this. So when you listen to the song, you can feel that. It's a very heavy song. It's sort of more slow. And yeah. um, it's, it's interesting to watch how these musicians grow, you know yeah. what I mean? Just like her journey. Yeah, I love the reaction of fans to her saying that she was dying, though, that she felt like she was dying, because I don't know if you guys know, there's this huge Avril Lavigne conspiracy that she has actually died, yeah. and what? that the person that we're looking at in that photograph and the person from, like, the girlfriend track on is actually an imposter <laughs> named <laughs> uh, Melissa. Melissa, that's what? the best yeah. thing about it. And she, so <laughs> this is, like, it's it sounds crazy, but there's a lot of, like, you know, Proof. there's a lot of... <laughs> Internet proof. Wait, where did they get Melissa? Okay, so when her <laughs> debut album took off, she, like, obviously we all know Avril, like, went yeah. really big, and yeah. paparazzi and everybody was, like, following her around and hounding mm -hmm. her, and supposedly she hated the fame, so she got a look-alike, and that person was named Melissa, and that's, like, on the books of fact, that she had a look-alike that was following her around. But okay. right after her debut album, her grandpa, <laughs> her grandpa got really sick, uh -huh. and they were really close, like, they did everything together, and he eventually passed away, and supposedly Avril Lavigne got really depressed after that, and it was, like, like the pressure of writing a, like a next album got to her and unfortunately Avril Lavigne did guys trigger warning take her own life what? according to you know the internet proof um, and so then because it was such a big deal the the record company was like we got to keep this hush hush let's just throw Melissa in there and that explains oh why she was like you know only wearing pants remember like Avril Lavigne used to be like <laughs> yeah. I hate skirts I'd rather kill myself than wear a skirt yeah. and now Melissa is like hey hey you you I don't like your boyfriend and she's completely different like I don't think the original Avril Lavigne would have released that song, Hello Kitty. She would have not. I also don't think she would have married <laughs> oh the lead singer of Nickelback. She, she would, would have, have not. not. <laughs> So, that was Melissa. This is the oh, proof man. that this is yeah. a Melissa. very detailed conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, like, and 
I will say that the profile on Twitter that released that story has been uh, suspended. Right. And they oh. can't get as, their account back. Same as Guccifer 2.0 who said Hillary sold children out of a pizza restaurant. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why, because it's not true. Oh, OK. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I read this. I, I love it. I, I, you know, I love some of these pictures. Like, Katy yeah, Perry sure. is, Yeah, whatever. What's the one about Katy Perry that she's actually um, John oh, yeah. Ramsey? I that, believe it. That is hysterical. Is also, Taylor Swift is a clone. Yes. She's like a clone Satanist, like <laughs> right. the daughter yes. of the man. The Illuminati, yeah, whatever, yeah. yes. I can believe that. Guys, yeah, these are right. all plausible. I mean, I will say, wait, what? <laughs> I like to hear Back them. in the day, when did I, Avril was making those angsty songs, like I'm with you, and like, yeah. uh, I love that song. And I like, yeah, um, so good. I like her angsty album. music. That, um, so was that Melissa or Avril? No, that, that was, like anything that's cool and edgy, that was Avril. Anything okay. that's like poppy, that's Melissa. <laughs> Just to bring it full circle, there is a time I would have let Avril Lavigne run me over. Oh, oh. Really? there is. Yes. Um, I'm with you on that. I, as soon girl. as that video came out, I went to the mall wearing a tie, and people yeah. were like, what's yes, wrong with you, ties. you loser? They're like, yeah. throw yourself off the balcony. You're so lame. And then like two months later, they were wearing ties. And I was like, what's going on? She was on? every no, she was like, She was like, punk, rock, I'm from Canada. I'm a yeah. white girl. Yeah. And you're like, woo, you believe this. OK, cool. Oh, is that what she was like? Yeah, she was yeah. so like, all about like <laughs> oh puns. No, I'm making fun of your impersonation. Oh. No, but that's, that's what's funny is like, that's People what like it was like. It was, it was exactly like It was that. exactly Thank that, you. and Thank we you. all like believed it in our souls. Yeah. When she came out with Complicated, right? I, th I uh. think I was in like third grade, and I obviously had never had a relationship, but I was like, yes, men are so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> they are so complicated. <laughs> um, Meanwhile, I'm over here listening to Smooth Jazz. I never listened yeah. to Avril Lavigne. I, I never got on that train. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I could totally see you like you trying to do an ollie in the mall, like <laughs> getting a skateboard. I'm surprised you didn't have that. I did love Tony Hawk Pro Skater, so I, I think I missed oh, the boat on the skateboard. That was an excellent girl game. Yeah, that was an yeah. excellent game. game. Yeah, Always played Bam Margera. Mm. Oh, and you know what's new music too? Who we also love is Robin. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Robin has a new album coming out. I'm really so happy excited about, about this. Yeah, I love yeah. Robin. Me like. Dancing on my own is such a theme song because I'm often dancing on my own. So I like that song a lot. But um, yeah, her new song, Miss, Missing You, she released. You. Yeah. And it's from this new album, I think it's called Honey. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be out soon. And Missing You is such a catchy song and so fun. So if yeah. that's the tone of the album, it's like she's giving us what we wanted. Because she hasn't released an album for years. Yeah, another I, she one. She kind of took her whole 30s off just to sort of chill, which I get. Yeah. I feel like she's allowed. Yeah, you know? which I get. She's allowed. Uh, but I'm it's happy Robin. that she's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of new projects, um, NBC is beefing up its comedy lineup with the help of late night host Seth Meyers. Seth and his younger brother Josh are teaming up on a ha new half hour comedy series called The Exceptional. The show reportedly centers around a narcissistic condo resident who ends up becoming president of his co op homeowners association board. Josh Meyers is set to star in the series while Seth Meyers as serves as executive producer. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. Yeah. I, I um, love Seth Meyers. Like, he's someone who, like, I respect so much and, like, want to be, not in a creepy way, but I want to be <laughs> Seth Meyers. Um, just, I love his humor, his politics, like, it, when he's getting drunk with Kelly Clarkson versus when he's doing a closer <laughs> look explaining the Russia scandal. I think he's awesome. So I'm really excited that he and his brother are teaming up to, like, you know, write, <clears throat> I believe, in NBC comedy. I think they made some of the best shows, yeah. 30 Rock, The Office, Friends. And so I'm excited they're teaming up to do the show, which seems like it would be a really cool, you know, sitcom presence, like mm -hmm. apartment building, neighbors, you know, all that stuff, and, and LA, which, so I think I'm really, I'm, I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, would you let him run you show. over with a car? Yeah. <gasps> okay. But yeah. I'd want something more than just a picture. Be like, nah, can you bring me, can I be like your writer's <laughs> assistant you or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I would, be, I would be like that, yeah. They have a, yeah, they have a script commitment, so it's not definitely going to be me, but hopefully. Mm. Yeah. Because I, I didn't know that there were two of them this whole time. <laughs> I had no idea. I thought they were the same person. I was like, someone, Seth was on like that 70s show, and he can like host shit. He's everywhere, but apparently it's, it's, there's been two, there's two this whole two. time. You're going through a difficult time right now, I bet. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what did they do? <laughs> I know. One what? of them has a stash, one of them is naked on his face. <laughs> it's just like Parent Trap. They just is a split yeah. screen. Yeah. Oh, like exactly. Yeah. It's weird. I really like Seth Meyers, but you know what? Whenever Josh comes into the picture, he's instantly my favorite one. Mm. So the stash? The just... stash. He's a little bit taller. I saw him um, at Pee Wee Herman's show on Broadway, and I thought he was so good. Yeah. I thought he was really funny. And Seth is tall, too, though. So they're like just tall people. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like that we just had a moment where we were like, tall, they're both tall. They're cool. Maybe a little bit taller, but they're tall people. Yeah. They're, they're good. <laughs> we like tall people. Yeah. Tall is great. Uh, yeah, let's see. If, I hope it's a good show. Yeah. I mean, the co-op thing to me is so city-centric. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know what a co-op was before I moved to New York City. Yeah. So that you hope that other people can like relate to that concept because I've heard a lot of people that had to interview with co-op boards and have these horrible experiences and they're very selective on like who they allow into the building. So there's a lot of potential storylines that could be really funny. And, and like yeah. a lot of politics involved at a politics. smaller scale, which I think is kind of relevant now. So exploring it through like a co-op apartment building, like yeah. the political scene. Yeah. So this is cool. And like this isn't the first time they worked together. They worked on this Hulu anime show called The Awesomes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I kind of like when siblings work together. I don't know if I could do it. I was going to say, could you guys work with your siblings? I don't know if I could. I could work with my sibling, with my sister. I could also work with your sibling. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to work with your sister. I'd love to work with your brother. Yeah. I haven't met your siblings yet, but we're going to introduce them to each other later. so sweet. She's so yeah. nice. But that's why I'm like scared of disagreeing with her sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? Oh. She is so, you know how there's those people that are like just so nice. You're like, oh. We must maintain this like sweet, yeah. <laughs> protect beautiful them at all costs. Yes, yes, that's exactly how. I it have goes. nine siblings. <laughs> oh, um, no. I don't want to work with any of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love them very much. But no. But yeah, maybe one. There's maybe one brother that I could work with. I think we're like similar enough. And he's energetic enough right. that it could go well, but yeah. your entire family is like trying to figure out who, which brother this I'm is right yeah. now. You, do, you have to do I have six brothers, so Ooh. enjoy. Try to figure wow. out which one. Wow. Do a Hunger Games style. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or audition, or like make it Project Runway or something. They have to do yeah. some sort of task. Like you who all out. You are out. I'd be the same. <laughs> I would watch that. Who <laughs> would be willing Brady to decides be? decides who she loves the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, that's a show. You know, yeah. we pitched so many great ideas so on this show, and I'm like, is anyone writing these down? I yeah, know, we need to. <laughs> a show where I just pick my favorite of my ninth yeah. siblings. That's I love her. So, Bert and Ernie After Hours to yes. Brittany decides who she loves the best yeah. of her siblings. Cool. We have several amazing shows we're producing. I here. have like 17 nieces and nephews, so that could be season two. Like, oh my God. I love them. Mm. Yeah. I love you all. I love you all. Who is willing to be run over by you? Yeah. yeah. The car. That has okay. to be like one of these, yeah. But what if they all say like yes and you run them all over and then you're out of family? And then I go to prison. <laughs> yeah. And then you're okay. like, who's my favorite prison guard? The eighth season. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, in other news, Emmy winning orphan black actress Tatiana Maslany will voice the special edition Hunger Games audiobook. The special edition marks the 10th anniversary of author Suzanne Collins' worldwide best-selling trilogy. The audiobook will include a bonus Q&A with Maslany, along with exclusive of content about the apocalyptic series from the author. Woo! Ooh. Any Hunger Games fans at the table? The yeah. mm, I love it. It was like the first kind of sci-fi, these weird books yeah. that I got into. Because like the Harry Potter thing I didn't get into. <laughs> wow. Uh, Twilight thing I didn't get into. Uh, but are this, you okay I, with that dagger? Harry Potter chest? thing and you just equate it to Twilight thing? Excuse me. <laughs> to me, they're all in the same kind of no, category no, 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 of like no. young adult <laughs> fantasy. Harry Potter is literature now, okay? No, I inspired would, okay. generations of people to read. No, 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 was, I would have to agree I was with already you. I know, yeah. Yeah. Harry Potter, Twilight, same. No, they are same. not the same. There is same. the same yes. genre. No, they are not. They're Harry young Potter is Leagues ahead of what Twilight is in terms of the writing, the themes it explores, the characters. No, you know the what? Hundred percent. <laughs> no way. Twilight is bullshit. Oh, are you Potter. I think you're missing the point I'm making. We said genre of book. Fine, fine, but but. Mm. Young adults. You know what? You know what's in literature? Lord of the Fantasy. Rings. Yes. Lord of oh, the Rings. Oh, I'll give you on that. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. Literature. Well, Lord of the Rings is that, that is classic. Uh, that is. That is. Hunger Games is in the same category. Yeah. No, 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 no. Lord of the Rings is okay. The, the, no, as the Hunger Games. Okay, fine, oh, fine. Okay. That is so different. So I just want to say, like, so it's different. so easy to shit on Twilight, but Twilight was actually really, really good, you guys. I mean, what about, like, all that tension between uh, Bella and Edward, where he's like, I can't focus in class because she smells so good. You know, like, I I'm sure we could all relate to that, being in high school and being like, I want to eat one of my classmates. Yeah. Yeah. I can't focus on geometry. Yeah. No, That's true. is that not literature to you? Um, <sighs> sure. I think it's like so relatable that it's a little lowbrow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, that's but they did. Literature. I remember people. So many people were obsessed with those books, and Hunger Games yes. people were obsessed with those books too. And those movies I enjoyed them. The books were good. good movies. I like the movies. I mean, Jennifer yeah. J Law. I mean, hello, put yeah, her like yeah, on the yeah. map really as like becoming an action star or whatever. So yeah. good that braid. That I love braid. her just yelling, Peta. Yeah, and I just do this sometimes and out in New York, see who just will also yeah. just come I do. Like, 
<laughs> yeah. Does anyone? I also want to live my life though. When you like someone dies, cannon, like, and then a screech comes up. It's like this person died. I also that the home games don't inspire all like all of my family members all the time were like who would die first? I, Who's yes. gonna, so the alliances you make like and I know oh my, my younger God. brother would just be a cutthroat bitch like killing people, stabbing people oh. in the back. So oh at God. this table, <laughs> Hunger Games style, who wins? Shannon. No, I wouldn't win. You would win. You're always I'm, acting like I'm the secret murderer of the no, group when it's actually Brittany you. Is, I'm just a scapegoat because I'm like, I love murder. Yeah. But it's a joke. At the no, end of the day, I'm going to be the one that rolls over and dies quickly. And, and that, and the day, like, Cannon goes like, Fah, and Shannon's like, wee! Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys won't even have to kill me. I'll be like running into the knives myself. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. This feels so good. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that's a fair. It's always when you get in the friend group, you decide like how the home games would play out and who would end up winning, who would make it to the end and then die. Yeah. I went to one time with my family, all of a sudden we were like walking out of a restaurant and like someone just said, let the home games begin. And I grabbed <laughs> a stick and like sliced my brother's throat and like ran down the street. It Whoa. was really dramatic. <laughs> so you won that one. I okay. won that one. <laughs> uh, so she's reading it in a book then. She's audio booking it. Yeah. Would you guys listen to that? I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring it back to the book. No, no, that's a very important audio books. Um, I, you know, it's weird. I have such a hard time focusing to, on audio books, but I do love like the relaxation of someone talking like directly in your ear. Well, yeah. it's a good way to read books out without actually reading if you don't like to read. Yeah. I used to like audio books when I was a kid. Like when I would, mm. when I actually like first, Read Lord of the Rings. I got an audio book because it would help. Because those books are right. so dense. Yeah. So having someone narr like tell it to you, I also do, I do love though when you um when it was like autobiographies, autobiographies when the actual person yeah. narrates it because yeah. it's like oh it's like them telling me their story. But this is cool because like they also it's like the like Claire Danes is um narrated The Handmaid's Tale, right. which I think is really uh -huh. cool. Also, I mean, think she could have been a good off red, but Elizabeth Moss, of course, is yes. fantastic. But um yeah, this is cool. So yeah, I I, I'm a traditionalist. I like a book. I like right. to read a book. I like to fold the pages. Same. I like to like use my brain. Right. No. And I'm, sometimes I'm, the voice doesn't work. You know. Yeah. You have to have an audiobook voice. Yeah. But like for instance, yeah. so Michelle Obama's book coming out. I want, of course want to read Becoming, mm -hmm. but also part of me is like, wow, do I want her to tell it to me? Yeah. That's like true. imagine like how like just on the subway and just Michelle Obama's like telling you sold her me. life. You sold me. That would be yeah. kind of thing. But reading, of course, also. But she's. I feel like who, I would just like get dressed up to hear it. Be like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's Michelle. It's Michelle. I have to look nice. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Put on your pearls. Yeah. <laughs> Put on your pearls. Cannot. Can't be sloppy. Well, Michelle's talking to me. Yeah, you know? she'd make you act your best just because you feel like she's talking to you right exactly. now. Exactly, yeah. yeah. My best that reminds me of all the people who dressed up for Aretha Franklin's funeral. Yes. Oh. Like they put on their like Sunday best hat and they're like sitting in front of their TVs just like, oh. Yeah. There are, mo there are people that like bring that out of you. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh. This is cool though. <laughs> and, and again, also the 10th anniversary includes like talk about Michelle in all this new content too. So if you're fans of the books, you should get it because like 50 pages of new content, new information, like interviews with the author, interviews with a bunch of other people. So it's a, if you're into the Hunger Games, I, you should get it. Yeah. 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 Um, well, anyway, um, Academy Award winner Jordan Peele is setting his sight on the Twilight Zone. Peele has signed on to, signed on to host and narrate a re reboot of the creepy sci fi series. <laughs> Following in the footsteps of legendary TV writer and producer Rod Serling, Here's a quick look at what viewers can expect. You're traveling to another dimension. Another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. But of mind. A journey into a wondrous land. land. whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. I know. Yeah. I don't want Brittany gets creepy. Because we all know Brittany doesn't like scary things, so she's never seen the Twilight Zone. Not even like one, like I, I've watched it like in um, school, like media classes, we would watch an episode of the Twilight Zone. I remember oh. watching the opening and the guy standing there and he's like, today, oh, and I was like, ah! Right. <laughs> and You're I like, turned it off. Yeah, I was so like, funny because nope. you are you you are such a tough person, like you're a strong yeah. person that I would think like, oh, I don't care this bullshit, like it's not real. Nope. But then like any of the creepy music, like, oh no, nah. yeah. get out of this. You can't. You remember that show Unsolved Mysteries? Kind oh, of. Oh well, that's actually really scary. Right, but just the music would come on and I would run out of the room. Like it just like triggered wow. me. Yeah. So the do 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 music also triggers. That's that's how I felt about uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Do you oh. remember that show? Oh. 
Oh, um, so long I don't ago. think that was supposed to have that effect. Oh my god, <laughs> when he's like alone on his computer and it's like dun 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 dun. dun. You don't remember oh, this? Well, I don't I, remember. You're, I'm oh seeing that show in a new light all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did not like that show. Wow. At all. Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, that's that's pretty. <laughs> it's this is a cool thing with Jordan Peele. I mean, clearly he's having quite a year or two, and this series that he's producing, he's on narrate, is gonna be on CBS All Access, which is CBS's like, streaming service, which they're still trying to make a thing, yeah. but it has Star Trek on it and The Good Fight, so it's another high property, sh like high value show they're gonna put on it, and I, I mean, I guess if you like Twilight Zone, it's worth subscribing and watching, right. yeah. And as we've seen with Jordan Peele in Get Out, he knows how to do thrillers, he yes. can build suspense, and I think he's really good at telling unique stories from interesting angles. So I think it'll be, he's the proper person to do an update of The Twilight Zone. Totally. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to be just like the other show. I'm sure he's going to throw us for a loop. Totally, totally, cool totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why I think it's so exciting is because there's been so many reboots of, like, iconic shows like The Twilight Zone that get into the wrong hands. Yeah. But I trust Jordan Peele with my life. Like, yeah. I would say I'd let him run me over with a car, but I know he wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because he's all about making great things happen, and he knows that I am better off being alive. Because I have a lot to give world. Yeah. yeah. I can see it almost doing like a Black Mirror thing, you know? Yeah. Like totally. I can see them really going in. Have you watched Black Mirror? Nope. Okay, so <laughs> we but need you... to make you watch Black Mirror, The Twilight Zone, and everything. I saw else. a episode of Black Mirror, and I, it's like, scars me even thinking about it. Which one did you watch? It was the one where the girl wakes up in a house and all of a sudden people are like chasing her down and trying to kill her. That and sounds fantastic. She's like, she's like on a reality show That's and everybody's like Shannon. watching her try to avoid. I was like, this is so anxiety producing. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. I hated it. Yeah. I know we want it, and I want we got to get her to watch American Horror Story. I know, like we really one do. season at least. They're Don't you all... feel better when you're watching a horror show because you know where the anxiety is coming right. from, as <laughs> opposed to everyday life where you're like, why am I going <laughs> crazy? <laughs> I feel like it makes more sense for me watching her because I'm like, I'm having anxiety for a purpose. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and um, oh God, Jordan Peele is working funny. on another thriller movie called Us. I think he, yeah. he posted a poster of it. We don't know what it is. It's coming out in March. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Love it. Yeah. Well, what other shows do you, think, do you guys think should get rebooted? Ooh. Like Let's think. Uh, Will and Grace, no, already rebooted. Uh, yeah. Full House, no, already rebooted. Um, everything's been rebooted. Well, Clarissa <laughs> explains it all. <gasps> yes! I think that would be a fun show oh to reboot. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, Sam crawling through your bedroom yes. window. I am so Hi, obsessed Sam. with that. Like, what I show? Am like, what was oh. that? I think, yeah, it might be before your time. Yeah. It's uh, Melissa Joan Hart. Okay. And she's like, just like this cool teen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It had the coolest theme song, and she was always just like dancing in 90s clothing, be like, I'm going to tell you what's up. Oh, <laughs> she would talk straight to Cam. I, I, I do actually kind of know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay, and I, then the boy she had a crush on, which was her best friend, but she had a crush on him, he would yeah. just come through her window with a ladder. Yeah. Right. Like, it was uh, the coolest thing ever. Imagine your crush crawling through your window. <laughs> like, I, I still every night pray, like, please let my crush crawl through my window. That was even such if I a live 90s on the fifth floor. Yeah. 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 We need a, yeah. We need a reboot of crushes crawling through Dude. windows. Yes. Yeah. That's with consent. Really with, with, consent. Yes, with consent. Yeah, make sure yeah. that they actually are crushing on you and they want you through their window. Oh, it's a different time now. Different time now. Yeah, yeah, but there have been so many reboots of 90s shows, with, even from like Boy Meets World, The Girl Meets World, Will yeah. Grace, like everything that I don't know what I want rebooted because. Yeah. I, yeah. I the wanted... Office. Oh. Yeah, the Office. Yeah, the Office. They're, 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 they're yes. thinking about Already? the Office. Just leave. I was going to say, I feel like it was just on. But the thing is with the, it? with the Office, though, is that you. I mean, I, I really want new ideas and writers, new writers to be celebrated and given a chance, but The Office could make sense. You have an entirely new cast. Yeah. yeah. Like that, I take the format. The format works. We know that. Right. New cast, new setting, but same type of humor. I think that could work, and mm -hmm. I, I could support that. Yeah. Not, we just don't need a... We don't need the same show. We need, you know... Different. Exactly. Different. With yeah. that, with that type point. of... Like The Office, you know? I'd yeah. watch it. Oh. I'd watch it. And now <laughs> it's time for today's guest... Melissa Beneshai is the founder and creator of Bite Size Cupcake Company, Baked by Melissa. In celebration of its 10th birthday, Baked by Melissa has launched a sweet contest nationwide with lots of cool prizes, including delicious free cupcakes. Here to tell us more about it is Melissa Beneshai. Woo! Ooh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Ooh, yeah. Hi, Lucas. Oh my God, look at all of us. Ooh, so excited. Thank you, you can come on. Oh my god. This looks incredible. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Welcome to the oh. table and thank you oh. for bringing treats. Thank you oh. for having so me. Yes. Much. So I'm going to shovel this into my mouth. This is like the perfect breakfast. I mean, Literally. first though, I have a very important question for you. What celebrity would you let run you over with a car? <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama. Yeah, yes. oh, for sure. <laughs> 
good choice. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> totally. Well, I remember the first time I saw uh, one of your stores, I was just obsessed with it. The colors, how everything is so cute and tiny. Could you just tell us, like, what was the inspiration for it all? Sure. I mean, I love cupcakes. Mm -hmm. I love to bake and give things to people, watch them enjoy it. And I love the carefree culture of the 60s and 70s and mm -hmm. anything and everything that, like, that vibe is. So when I was fired from my job, I went home and I baked my tie-dye cupcakes that I had been baking for everyone and anyone already because it made me happy to make other people happy. Um, and I surrounded myself with people who love me and support me and had skills that I didn't. And we started Bake by Melissa together. It's been 10 years. Yeah. It's been 10 freaking years. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not easy, but it's amazing. And um, I think it's like the attitude of taking a really shitty day or a challenging mm -hmm. situation and seeing the opportunity and the opportunity to do what I love every day and not just go home and feel sorry for myself. Totally. That's the attitude that founded Baked by Melissa, inspired Baked by Melissa, and that's the attitude that continues to grow Baked by Melissa every day. And I think that attitude is essential for success in anything. Mm -hmm. That old job must be like, mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> that old job is super happy for me. Are they? Yeah. That's oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like, even the woman, the director of HR, um, we're Facebook friends. I'm like, they all oh. follow the success of Baked by Melissa. It wasn't the right fit for me. I was yeah. obviously upset when I got fired, but mm -hmm. I think when anyone kind of loses a job is probably in their best interest and the company's best interest. Yeah, totally. Well, speaking of the 10th anniversary, you have this amazing, amazing kind of gift giveaway. I'm so excited about <laughs> it. Find the Golden Cupcake Contest. Can you tell us about that? Because I'm so pumped for this. Sure. So now through October 7th, 10 lucky winners. You can order at bakedbymelissa.com for nationwide shipping, pick up in stores, which is free, or delivery in Manhattan. You could also go into any one of our 14 store locations. Purchase our latest and greatest pack, which is my favorite because it has every available flavor. Mm -hmm. And um, you can scratch off the golden cupcake for a chance to win 100 cupcakes oh. on your birthday <laughs> for the next decade. What? Oh. Sign me that's, up. Yeah, so that's 1,000 free cupcakes. That's just amazing. That's insane. Guys, you'll always get something for so your excited. birthday. <laughs> and there's like thousands of other prizes as well. And who doesn't love to scratch off one of yes. those golden mm. things? And then if you do win, you might get golden stuff oh, many of the month cupcakes inside oh as well. I feel like Charlie. I know, I, I love it. Feel, this is like what he must have felt like. I, I mean, love that you're Wonka. a Willy Wonka sitting here yeah, with us right now. you are Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's a damn good prize to win. Go out. Only one person has won so far. There are nine more to claim. Okay, wow. so this is 10 minutes. Yeah. And then when is this over? When is the competition, or the contest over? Just whenever? October 7th. Okay. Okay, cool. You know, this, I, well, I'm so excited about like you just said. This is like a legit, you, this is a very good prize. This is like amazing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. worth it. Oh. And there is like so many other prizes you could get, yeah. like discounts and cupcakes and things like that. The thing we all love about Big by Melissa is that they're mini and they're little, and so you can eat different flavors and try and sample. And you have a thing called Mini of the Month, right? Yes, the Mini of the Month right there is vanilla cookies and cream, Yum. which is the one that might be stuffed with gold. <gasps> oh, <Yeah. laughs> that sounds. Check. That Tell one's not because it's it. only in the winning ones. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still good. How, oh my god, it's so good. These flavors. <laughs> First of all, that sounds like the most delicious thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, how do you come up with them? Everyone has passion. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is my passion. Right. Food, flavor right. combinations, cupcakes, dessert. I, I, it's what I think about when I'm falling asleep at night. Oh, like, really? Mm, yeah. That would be so good. And usually new flavors kind of marinate in my head for like days to months before I actually get into the bakery and, and put them together. And, do you have any favorite flavors? All of them. <laughs> I, um, I've, I say peanut butter and jelly a lot, but this right here is chocolate milkshake. It has a chocolate uh -huh. milkshake stuffing, and it, it's amazing. Dark chocolate, peanut butter cup, <sighs> salty, sweet, peanut buttery, delicious. Chocolate cookies and cream, sugar cookie dough, chocolate chip banana. I mean, oh my wow, sugar oh my. cookie dough looks so good. They're all so the peanut butter and they're so pretty. You yeah. don't want to eat them, yeah. but, but then I you're won't. like, I deserve this. I <laughs> but they're just a bite, and everything's under 50 calories. And <gasps> I actually like the sandwich two together. Oh, um, Ooh, like a, like, like peanut butter and jelly and dark chocolate peanut butter cup together as a sandwich. Uh. Ice cream. <laughs> it's so good. Everything's under 50 calories. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So you don't, and you can try every flavor. Yeah. It's not like you know. So a whole box. What is this? Like 
couple that's, hundred. That's 50, that's 50 cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. so, right. okay. Well, <laughs> so you found success with the cupcakes, but have you guys ever thought about branching out into any other sweets? And well, so we do have, we have gluten-free cupcakes, and then we also have bite-sized double stuffed macarons. Ooh. Oh, Yum. do those come in like a lot of different flavors as well? Yes. Nice. What flavors do you have? Red velvet, snickerdoodle, sugar cookie. Because I'm just obsessed with sugar. Yeah. I'm like a yeah. chocolate person, but I love sugar cookie dough. It's so good. I always figure out a way to get it back on the menu in like a different yeah. way. But again, those are not like typical macaroni. Like those are really like there's distinct. There's cookie dough. Yeah, there's those salted are awesome. caramel oh that has like a dark chocolate ganache and sea salt. I'm, and triple chocolate is actually my favorite yeah. flavor. Of the I love when you talk about them. You go into this like light. I know. Like, yeah. like, you're, you're like in love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like your Food boo. Food triggers emotion <laughs> for me. Totally. Well, I, what, you're, what you were mentioning before, your story is quite an inspiring one. You, you know, you got fired. You easily could have been like, fuck life. <laughs> this is, it sucks. But you kind of managed to like turn all that into a business now that's 10 years old and growing. What is your advice for future entrepreneurs? Oh, I have so much advice. I mean, <laughs> first and foremost, like you are responsible for yourself. Take responsibility for the things that happen to you and the way that you respond to the things that happen to you. You could always improve yourself and you can't change anyone else. And when I got fired, I, I did that. I, I just knew I needed to take responsibility for the way that I felt and I did what made me happy. Great. Right. I love that. <laughs> and making what you Making you happy created all this. And created now we're, so many other people. And now happy. I'm yeah. happy. We're happy. We're all happy. It's so great. Exactly. And you also are going to show us, or you have a tutorial on how to frost. Yes, I'm, I'm going to so make our, I could just do, you know, just do it sitting down, yeah, which is so kind excited. of so nice. So we'll do two flavors. This is dark chocolate peanut butter cup. Oh. Ooh. Is that just all peanut butter? Yes, this is Skippy wow. peanut butter. Can you just give her shots of sugar? Yeah. yeah. Like, chug, oh, chug, we'll chug. just take that. Oh. That's my, like a spoonful of peanut butter is my oh. breakfast most mornings. Just stuff them. Oh, that's how you stuff them? Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 It's yeah. getting messy on Bill Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what right, if we just well. cover ourselves in peanut butter? Is everybody down? <laughs> yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Let's do this. We'll just do a couple. That's okay. Yeah. Here. I didn't know that's how you stuff them. That's so simple. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at that. And then usually I'd put a little dollop of peanut butter on the top too and sprinkle with coarse sea salt, but we had some technical difficulties, which is totally fine. I'm gonna eat one. It yeah. was like very yeah. beautiful, then, the whole well, how do we use these? <laughs> Okay, so. Do I just put this on top or do I just, oh, they're like little squares. Mm. Oh, it's so good. The next flavor oh, I want that is electric mm -hmm. tie-dye. It's really just vanilla, a beautiful mm -hmm. dress-up vanilla cupcake. Mm. Um, vanilla icing, vanilla tie-dye cake. Beautiful. Our, and you say you just love the tie-dye because of the, you love the 60s. I love the great, the first batch of tie-dye cupcakes I ever made were Grateful Dead. <laughs> oh, damn. And I, awesome. Grateful Dead inspired for my friends who love the Grateful Dead. Um, I like to like relax and chill out uh -huh. um, uh -huh. and eat cake. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, That's fine. That's yeah, fine. we all do yeah, that. All so do. I used to do <laughs> every that every day. night with a with like two normal sized cupcakes right. after work. That was like my me time. Right. Um, I would buy two different cupcakes from the Clover Deli actually across the street from my apartment in Murray Hill. I love um, this. I feel like we could be good. I friends. feel like I'm watching yeah. artists at work right now. Yeah, because yeah. I like, couldn't. Yeah. Anyway, so when we started Baked by Melissa, I wound up losing weight because I was only eating our cupcakes. Uh. Like two major, huge cupcakes that I. I love so that. Funny. Every day. I love so how quickly funny. you can do this and yeah. they look yeah. like Seriously, this is like so professional. Michelangelo yeah. painting the, the Sistine yeah. Chapel. Like it was just like the, <laughs> the, the ease you just did that. I've, I've gotten my, what is it, like 10,000? Oh, hours? yeah. Uh -huh. I've gotten my 10,000. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, wow. It's amazing. This is my thing. I just put me in front of a tray of cupcakes yeah. on the ice and top them and stuff them, and I'm happy as a clam. All right. That's so great. Say we start eating. That you yeah. are still so involved and that you have such passion. I, don't think, I think there's not a lot of big, you know, companies that are nationwide that can say that. Yeah. So good. Oh. Yeah, I think yeah. it's super important so to maintain the authenticity Cheers. Cheers. of the brand. Cheers, oh, Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Really. <laughs> mm. These are my wow. Yum, yum, yum. Yep. The yeah, color so makes good. them taste better somehow. I don't know how. But and they're, they're really photogenic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, they're so good. You know it's peanut good butter. when I'm, I mean, 10 years yeah. in and I'm still like. <laughs> this is so good. I forgot That's you so put good. peanut butter in and I was like, oh yeah. It's like a little surprise. Mm. I would definitely eat this anything. when I'm uh, relaxing and chilling yeah. out. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, totally. It's funny how we all love relaxing, right? Yeah. 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 I can't wait for relaxing to be legal, legal. in New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to relax a lot in college at night. I went to Syracuse, it's very cold there. And then I would make special cakes. Uh -huh. And relax oh, with my uh, friends, and that was like really fun. That's actually, yeah, whatever. You're expanding oh, well. in Cali. Is this what's gonna happen? Relaxing, know. very relaxing. I just like to relax. Yeah, yeah. I need we to relax more. Same. 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 Yeah, same. I love yeah. that. Now baked by Melissa has a whole new meaning for me. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, yes, exactly. How cool yeah. is that? You know, I just That's didn't so know the backstory. Yeah. But yeah. I love you. Everybody baked by yeah. Melissa. Yes. Oh, super cool. Wow. I am so happy you came here. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you so for much all the cupcakes for and me. the good vibes. <laughs> and you guys make sure to visit a Baked by Melissa store or head over to their website to learn more about how you can win free cupcakes. That's all from us. We'll see you Monday, same time, same table. <laughs>